Hello folks, today I'm going after NGC 7822 and I chose this one because it's another HA target that I can actually start on early and it's in the north around 20 degrees high from my location and plus it it looked like a really cool nebula. It actually looks like um, a, a skeleton head. And with the moon still at 83%, I'm going to just stick with HA today. And I want to show you what this looks like. Let's just go to the the frame, the Framing and Mosaic Wizard. I'm going to show you the NGC 7822. Ah, four degrees. That's, let's go five degrees. Oh, that was fast. And let's turn that. And if you can see, it looks like uh, 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 there's the brow, a couple of eyes, the teeth. It, to me, it looked like in the skeleton head or an alien. It just looked cool. And, and, and I just want to stick with HA today. So, and the only thing is, um, it doesn't fit. The whole thing didn't fit in a single frame. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two frames and then I'm going to stitch them together after. So right now I'm working on the top half, and then I'm going to work on the bottom half. And if you look at their, uh, the wizard can actually do two panes, but um, I didn't really like the overlap they do. I think I want a little bit more of an overlap since I had extra room here and extra room at the bottom, just to be on the safe side. So I'm not going to use theirs. I aligned it myself, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, thanks for listening. Hey, I am back. And this is how my guiding is looking. I'm, I'm right now. I'm imaging with my refractor and reducer, and I'm guiding with the the low star X2 and that little guide scope on top with the focal length of uh, I think it's 190. And the tote RMS error is 0.82 right now, but my image scale right is, is for the the imaging camera and scope is 2.04. So. Uh, 0.95 right now. I should still be getting round stars with that. It's only half of my image scale. Uh, the only thing I've been battling because I don't get round stars, I believe, is I, I have flexure issues. And today I, I got the pliers out and I tried to tighten everything down. So I'll be zooming in on some stars and we'll see how that looks. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey. I am back and I've stacked the first nine images. I, I was doing three minute exposures each. So that's 27 minutes. This is the stack data right here with flats included. And I did a quick ABE to see if it would get rid of some of that brightness around the, the corner and it did. Although it looks like I have a little bit of a, I don't know if that's a satellite cutting through it. I might have to, I'm gonna have to go through these images one by one to find that. But it looks like my camera is rotated perfectly. So I've got the brow going on there. I got the eyes almost and got the teeth going. And once I uh, stitch together, you know, when I start capturing the other one and I stitch together, I can't wait to see how this is gonna look. Um, and let, let's zoom in on a, a bright star and see how, if it's, if I'm, any rounder than last time. Last time I was out, my star seemed kind of flat. There, uh, well, according to that one, that one's not as flat as I saw the previous day, so maybe the pliers helped a little bit, but I, I probably still have to go through and, and just check if there's anything I missed. There's lots of things I can screw in tighter, if anyone has any suggestions, but I'm, I'm certain I'm, I'm battling flexure issues right now. And because last time I was out, I, I did see the star. If I scrolled through my images, slowly drifting across. Not much, because I didn't do that many exposures, but it was enough that I could see they were a little bit elongated in the direction of that drift. So that, that's my, my biggest issue for now. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, I am done capturing data for now. Um, and this is what it looks like. This is how they are, the rotation of how they originally looked. It's upside down. That doesn't matter. You can rotate them. But what I want to do is this is actually the top half and this over here is the bottom half. So I want to rotate them clockwise in one direction because I want the, I want it to be, uh, horizontal for my stitching software. So what I'm going to do is, and, and by the way, um, you want to make these nonlinear, of course, and get as much processing as you can. 
before you stitch them together because I, in my view, stitching stuff together should be the final process. Um, but I, I could be wrong. I'm totally new at this. But let's rotate these once clockwise. Let's see, rotate clockwise. Oh, that was that one. And let's rotate this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clockwise. Ah, oh, I did the same picture. Okay, now let's go to this one. Okay, so this is how they're going to be stitched together from here to here. There's a lot of overlap, you can see. Um, uh, this is what I consider the teeth of the skull right there. So there's going to be a lot of overlap here, but then I've got a lot of, well, not much stuff going on here. So let's just save this off as uh, I'll put these in my rough draft folder. Now you can, that uh, stitch, stitching software I use can use TIFF or JPEG format. Uh, I'll just save it as JPEG for now. And I'll call this um, panel two, this one on the right. And this one I'll call panel one, which I've already named them. Now, I don't know if that's the correct terminology. Um, maybe you call them panes, panels, frames, whatever you want. I'm not sure what other people call them, but that's what I call them. Okay, now let's open up my stitching software. Hey, I am back again, and Microsoft has a very good tool for stitching together photos. It's called Image Composite Editor, and I've seen people stitching together Milky Way photos with this before, and it seems to work. It seemed to work for them pretty well, so I gave it a shot, and it couldn't be more easy. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to pick New Panorama, and here's my two photos here, Panel 1 and Panel 2. Open those up. And then I'm going to click uh, number two on Stitch, Aligning Images, and you can see it shows you how it's going to look. And um, since I lined this up manually myself in SG Pro, I didn't really make it perfect. I got maybe a quarter inch top and bottom, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to click on the next, and I think you can rotate this, but I'm not going to rotate it. It's rotated it just how I wanted it already. Now I'm going to click Crop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down about that quarter inch there to get rid of that, that edge. And I'll drag this up. Oops, I dragged the whole thing. I mean, just, there we go. Move that up just like that. I'm going to say export. And let's see, I'm going to click on... Uh, you can, you can, there's other parameters you can change here, but I'm just going to say export to disk. And I'll call this final. And that's it. Let's go look at my final image here. And let's rotate it. Hey, there it is. And I've zoomed in before. You, you, you can't even see any place this is stitched. I've tried it on a number of photos. It really works well. And you can sort of see I've got the a eh, little bit of the eyes. Um, I'm not going to collect any more data on this one, though. I've decided uh, I'm going to take off my reducer, and I want to zoom in more on this area here. It looks like a lot of thick nebulosity going on there, and I'm going to let this area go. So, But it, it, looks, eh, it looks better than I thought it would, actually, for the, the little amount of time I actually caught data. So, all right, that's all I got. Thanks for listening.